Merlot is a red wine grape originally from France. It is believed that the name comes from the French word merle, which means blackbird. Since this grape is dark and bluish in color, it is thought that French winemakers named it Little Blackbird or Merlot. Merlot grapes are sweet, soft, with thin skins, and they produce some of the most famous and delicious wines in the world. This is one of the primary grapes used in the production of Bordeaux wine. And according to winesearcher.com, it has very strong ties to the Bordeaux wine region, where it is believed it originated. Recent studies have discovered that Merlot is actually a hybrid grape, variety dating from the 18th century. It is the product of crossing Cabernet Franc with Magadoulin Noir grapes. This last one, a very old and rare variety that very few people know about. Merlot wines are the perfect companion for any dinner meal because their rich flavors work nicely with many foods. They pair very well with any beef, lamb, or veal dishes and stews. They can also be paired with chicken, pork, or any dish with mushrooms in it. For a tasty appetizer, try pairing Merlot with an array of different cheeses. Or for a yummy dessert, try pairing it with a variety of chocolates. Merlot wine grapes are grown around the world and they are so versatile that they are used in many of the wine blends we find on the market. They add good flavor to any mixture, kind of like my guest for this episode, Mr. Adrian Dijon. Adrian was born in Minnesota and he studied music at the Metropolitan Music Academy in Milwaukee. He is a multi-talented guitar player singer and the front man of the popular R&B band Chili Sauce. The wine I picked for our chat today is the 2010 Merlot from Opolo Vineyards in Paso Robles, California. They describe it as well balanced with lively fruit and natural acidity that delivers a smooth mouthfeel and alluring aftertaste. Sounds delicious, don't you think? Let's open up a bottle. I'm Tammy Tam Tam and this is another episode of Glass of Wine. Hey, my brother from another mother, Adrian yep. John in the house. You're looking very fly tonight, and you're sexy, and you know it. Well, it's just something that I just found in the back of the closet. Oh, uh, yeah, you know. Well, toss it on. And I think you're just kind of a little too sexy for this and, table. Well, that's how we do. You look just, wonderful oh, too. Oh, huh? thank you. And you know, it was so cool. We kind of got the same vibe going on, that, and we didn't even like call each other up ahead of time. It was like we just showed up. The planets aligned. The Adrian and Tammy hat collection. Yeah, the hat yeah, collection. Yeah. So. I can't wait to see what happens next week. <laughs> so it's an honor to be to have you as my guest tonight. Um, I'm Tammy Tam Tam. This is Adrian Dijon. I also like to call him 80 Cent. So I'm really excited about this, and now I'm really even more excited because we have a hot bartender as get serving us some amazing wine. And there it goes. This is the Maya You're so Adrian. Sweet. The glass Bye. of wine that you were talking about. <laughs> yes. And for my guests, I pick out a glass of wine that I think suits the character of my guests. And I know you love Perfect. Merlot, so yes, he's a Merlot pour, drinker. Pour away, love, bud. Or is for wow. Adrian Merlot. I got Merlot. a reputation. I got a yeah. reputation. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Amaya. You're, You're so welcome. Actually, I like so the welcome. Boone's Farm strawberry. Oh, there. dear. Got a little, uh, oh, there you go. That ain't right. happening. Right. Yeah, <laughs> not in my world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Amaya. Enjoy. You're awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. So, cheers. Cheers. I'm on cloud wine because you're here. I'm on cloud wine. Wow. That's a new one. That's a new Tammy original. <laughs> Glass of positive. Cheers. To you. What do you think about it? Do you like it? Uh, mm. Yes. What What do you um, taste when you? Um, it reminds me of um. Reminds me of Donna actually. Oh. I had to say that. That was. Although many yeah, women. Yeah, you're were gonna going get a lot of points them. tonight with Donna. <laughs> yes, it's smooth and full body. Mm-hmm. With a touch of happiness. It's oh, happiness. I love that. That's <laughs> awesome. It's making me cry now. <laughs> Where are you from? Where I'm from? I'm born 
born in Minneapolis, grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and um, so going home is tough. I go back and forth. You know, you know. Now, um, I think we have something in common. You were raised by your grandmother, is that correct? Great grandma. Your great grandma. Wow. Because I was raised by my grandmother and grandfather as well, my mother's side. And obviously she did good because she raised a wonderful human being. Um, I appreciate you so much. I know that you you helped out with like the Boys and Girls Club. You're just really good that way. And um, what made you decide to do that? Um, well, I mean, it's just old school morals and because I was like, you know, the oldest, you know, like my, my younger brothers. Uh, our one is like five years younger, the other is like over ten years young, you know, so you younger. So kind of felt, older. yeah, like you so, had... But I mean, I just always yeah. love kids, you know. And I love the innocence and yeah. I love uh, trying to get them on the right, right track. track, right yeah. off the bat, you yeah. know. Learn to play together, play well, yeah. play, play nice with others. Yeah, play nice in the sandbox. <laughs> I think more adults need to learn to play nice in the sandbox. <laughs> kids, and, kids and German shepherds, I love yeah. the most. Nice. Oh, um, you have nice Oh, dogs. love is a four-legged word. Love yeah, is a four-legged yeah. word. I love my dogs. Right. So um, you are a guitarist, singer, and you... Depending on who you ask. Who you yes. ask, well, <laughs> and you've been in various bands uh, growing up, and what was your inspiration? What made you start to, to get in this business in the first place? Um, well, initially, initially, I was way into sports, and um, but as, you know, as I kind of like stopped going, I'm small now, I was smaller at one time, I just kind of like, I always loved music, we had a like, a long haul, I would always sing Michael Jackson tunes, and <laughs> just enjoy, I just enjoyed music. And at that time, I didn't know how how uh, how much my father was uh, involved in music, and you know because I grew up with my great grandmother, but right. found out that um, he had done a lot of stuff with you know bands of the sixties, seventies, wow. and we have a lot in common. And, uh, <laughs> and so I, yeah, I got into it, and um, lo and behold, just had some. Some fantastic people, you know, bless me. But you know, a lot of neighborhood musicians kind of, um, you know, they would uh, you know, teach me a few things, you know, and and um, and it's it's funny because going from there till now, like I am so happy to say that the guy who taught me how to play guitar ended up being the guitar player for Earth, Wind & Fire. Wow. And, and at this point... We're talking big, big league here. He, his name is John Johnson, and he's uh, the musical director for uh, Boys to Men. Really? So if you ever go to Vegas and you go to the Boys to Men show, ask for John Johnson. Really? And then ask him how big a pain in the butt I was to teach how to play. <laughs> Well, I'll drink to that. I think it's time for another swig. <laughs> Wine is a hug in a glass, right? We need at least three hugs a day. Yeah. <laughs> Who are your top three musical influences and why is that? Top three. So you want me to break down the hundreds. Yes. The hundreds. I'm influenced by you, you know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Why is that? Um, because like, again, there's no inhibitions. Like a lot of times, I would be like thinking, well, what is Tammy gonna do tonight? <laughs> and what can I do? And, and that's what really made us a good team. And I, again, I love playing with you. I but, totally concur. Yeah. Um, musicians. I wasn't, you know, everybody loves to sing Hendrix because I like the rock and that, but honestly, I was into the front man, you know, um, of course, Michael being the first person I ever heard, you know, and seeing him run his show uh, later in life, just how professional he was and how efficient he was. Um, uh, Prince, because he dared to be different. Yes. And, um, huge fan, huge loss. We miss you. We miss you, Michael. We miss you, Prince. You know, but you look at all of the all of those bands in the '80s, in which I think is missing from music today, is that 
it was such a big presentation. Like, my favorite performer was David Lee Roth. I actually went to three cities to see him. Wow. So that's the first time I ever, well, I follow Prince too, but that was the first time I actually drove to three cities to see yeah, that he's concert. He's a great entertainer, a great front um, man. Yeah, and when he would do those big high <laughs> kicks on jump, you know, like he's doing some martial art kicks or whatever. You know, so um, I, I always, I loved him for the performance. I love Prince for the attitude and the vibe, and then I love uh, Michael for his professionalism. But I mean, like again, I learned from everything. I'm inspired by you know uh, movies, by songs, anything right. that can can right. put you into that thought. You right. know, I, especially if you're a songwriter, yes. and it gives you it could be a picture, it could be nature, it yeah, could be yeah. something that happened in your day, or yeah, that's so true. I'm even inspired by that idiot Spike. But we'll just keep that. We'll keep that between. Who was in another interview? <laughs> Oh, he was a hot mess. He was a hot mess on his interview. I know he was. I know. He's always on. I mean, I... He's goofy and witty and funny. I think he lost his calling. He should have really been a... Uh, not. A, I mean, he is a musician, but like a comedian. Yeah, so. he is fantastic. He's funny. Fantastic. And he's a good person. Do you think there's a difference between being an entertainer and a musician? Oh, of course, of course. I mean, like you can be the best musician yeah. in the world, but not good at entertaining well, and ask, vice versa. Ask any jazz guy, you know. I mean, I hate to say that, you know, and no offense to any of the jazz people listening, but they're so concerned with the with the theory and the te technical part of the performance. That they the forget to feel, feel it. Yeah, it's you know, they lose and, the it's, and it's. It's um, it's a brilliant. place it's a place for that you know it just happens to be in an orchestra or behind the scenes or on a you know a, a recording maybe um, musicians or not musicians but performers and entertainers they are there to connect with the audience um, and maybe not on a, not on a more on an emotional way rather than on a technical way, you know. Right. It, you know, you're supposed to lift them up or you're supposed to make them feel a certain way, you know, yeah, and so that's true. what that's what I, I get from entertainers. Um, and a good entertainer, you can't take your eyes off of them. And it doesn't matter because you can be a musician and be entertaining also. So it's kind of like, it's what you, uh, what you decide. How do you decide to present, present it? You know, and that's so musicianship and entertaining. It can it can coincide, but strictly musician, then it's a different thing. You know. How would you describe yourself in one sentence as a musician? Um, Committed. committed committed you know um, like you know when you're out here trying to make a buck what I what I find from a lot of the musicians I've met around here is a lot of them are jobbers you know which is cool you know I mean that's the difference be, between being a leader of a band and being a hired musician get your money the best way you can but um, I have a hard time focusing on a bunch of different projects um, you know, and I've been asked to do different things, but, uh, you know, I put my all into it. And if I'm not feeling it, I'm not going to do it right. for a little cash that, you know, that you can, you know, you can, you can make your little money doing, doing other things, but it's a rep, it's, this represents me. So, like, when I'm in the steel breeze, I'm 100% in the steel breeze. I dress the part, yes, I rehearse the part, all in. and I'm all in. When I'm in the chili sauce, that's what I do. Yep. So I might have to take all my leathers and, and all that. Those and guys wear are the so suit. talented too, and they're super <laughs> nice and cool. I, I appreciate your chili sauce band. So. What was your most embarrassing moment? Oh. The still reads. <laughs> oh shoot! Wow, that's a very good question. My most embarrassing moment. 
Let me think about that one. I know what it is. Okay, here we go. We were doing a gig outside at the Sands Casino during the summer, and it's a pool party. And you're supposed to wear a bathing suit. So I had my bikini on or whatever, and I'm singing hella good, and I'm jumping up and down. Woo, I'm all in. And people look at me and they go, I guess my bathing suit, like, oh. like I had a little, what do you wardrobe, call it? Wardrobe, wardrobe malfunction, malfunction. <laughs> Janet Jackson. And I didn't realize it because I was like all in. And not like my boots are big or anything. You, you, but. you gave the audience some boom. <laughs> and I didn't realize wow. it. It was kind of embarrassing. So I'd have to say that would be my most embarrassing moment. No. Oh, you've seen two. You've seen them all. But they only saw one then. <laughs> well, Mom, I have, I have two. One that was recent that, of course, you're going to remember this. Me sitting in with you guys uh, recently at Rumbleians. Well, what so I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing, and the guys, you know, folks are just like, oh man, we can't hear you, can't hear you. Guitar solos, we can't hear you, you know, turn up, turn up. Because we have no sound man there. So the second set, of course, I turn up. So now I'm like all feeling myself a little bit. I'm going to go out into the audience a little bit and, and make sure I'm happening. And as I back up, um, the pedal board that is pretty much a spaceship, uh, I actually backwards fell over my pedal board. Remember that? And then I had to get up and act like, oh, I'm okay. It's all good. That's part of the show. That's part of the show. I was doing, I'm doing that for y'all. For y'all. I'm so glad that... Um, a uh, uh, bag man and nobody put that on YouTube. <laughs> that would have been like Reno's funniest moments. Oh dear. Um, but again, when I was preparing to come down to see you, I thought of um, the one night we were playing at uh, Black Oak Casino. Oh yes. And it just so happens that I was in Minneapolis the week before. And I mean, my my fighting record, I think I'm like 0 and 1, and I think I'm going to keep it that way. Like, I started to fight, and then I, I did. So, I mean, so I'm pretty much 0 and 1. But the one that I lost, I got sucker punched. Oh, no. You remember the show? I came to, and my, and like my whole face was swollen. I remember that, yes. And so I had three days to get the swelling down. And so I do the I, show with a bandana over my whole, because this lip was like up here. It was like bad Botox that day. It was terrible. <laughs> Not only did I lose the fight, but I no longer loved Westerns. Because, you know, Western people in Western movies, they can fight all day. No swelling, no bruises. They look fine. They're ready for the next scene. Me, it was all like... Oh, dear. When you can feel your heart beat and your lip is steadily getting, like, huge. You know, so I'm you can, like... You like, wrap your whole lip around that section right there and just swallow. You're singing like Fat Albert and people think that you, you know... Who is this dude with the with the mask on? Is he gonna rob the casino with that? You know what I mean? So that was like I do remember that. Very embarrassing, but I love playing there, and that was, that was a great room, yes. great times, great times, <laughs> great time with you tonight, well, also. Darling. Likewise, and the truth is in wine. Thank you again for being my guest. My brother from another mother, Adrian Dijon, a.k.a. 80 Cent. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. And I'm on cloud wine. <laughs> I look into my glass.